What's up guys, um, Nash here. Today I'm going to talk to you about fat storage. So basically about, I'm going to try to explain the mechanisms uh, that makes that make a, us fat. So how do we get fat? What, what do we physiologically uh, need to fulfill? What are those physiological conditions that have to be um, fulfilled in order to store body fat? Uh, well, the thing is, there is a hormone responsible for body fat, okay? That hormone is called insulin. So you can't store fat, body fat, without insulin. So you need insulin for many different things, but the main, one of the problems that we have is that insulin stores body fat. Now, is the insulin a, a bad hormone? No, it's not at all. Insulin is essential hormone. It's produced by the beta cells, cells in the pancreas, and it elevates sugar in the blood so without the insulin for example if you have a high carbohydrate meal when your when your sugar levels go high that that can potentially become deadly for the brain uh, because brain can only receive certain amount of glucose blood sugar this is why we have insulin to actually lower that blood sugar and allow the body to use glucose blood sugar uh, as efficiently and safely as possible. This is what insulin does. Now, insulin also trans transports amino acids and uh, glucose into the muscle cells. So it's obviously an essential hormone. Now, the problem is when that insulin is elevated and elevated throughout the day, or if that insulin is chronically elevated. So if you are exposed, for example, to uh, a high carbohydrate diet, and you eat maybe four, five, six times a day, you need carbs all the time, you are exposed to a permanent elevation of insulin. So you're chronically high in a, in a high insulin state. So what happens in that case? Insulin does take uh, glucose, ec extra glucose from the blood and stores that extra glucose in the glycogen stores and also in the fat stores. So a lot of people think, wait a little bit, uh, why that should be bad if, if that hormone is responsible for storage of amino acids and glucose into the muscle cells, obviously it means that it delivers amino acids straight into the muscle cells, which is very important, this is how we grow muscles, and also it delivers glucose into the glycogen stores, so it makes me stronger, I have more glycogen to use. True, but up to the point. Now the problem is, when your glycogen stores are full, insulin have not nowhere else to deliver glucose, but to divert glucose into the fat cells, right? So your glycogen stores are full, you're still eating carbohydrates, and uh, blood sugar gets elevated, so insulin has no other option. It has to lower the glucose in the blood and, and remove that glucose somewhere. If your glycogen stores are full, there is nowhere else to go but into the fat cells. Now people say, oh, but I train every day, you know, I'm, I'm burning a lot of glycogen. Not really. For example, uh, weight training or resistance training does not burn too much glycogen. You don't burn my, much, much glycogen in, during your training session. So maybe you burn 100 grams of glycogen. So this is not much, maybe less than that. Because you burn the, the combination of brain chain amino acids, you burn glucose, glycogen, and you burn some body fats. You're not burning just glycogen, and you don't burn as much as well, because glycogen, we, we don't perform our, uh, our workouts that don't last for three, four hours. They're usually 45 to 60 minutes, and uh, you perform maybe 20 to 30 sets, which are in average, uh, let's say 15 seconds each, although they should be longer, but that's another subject. So you don't burn that much glycogen. So maybe if you have a couple of meals of carbohydrates a day, maybe 50, 60 grams each, maybe that's all you need to replenish your glycogen. But if you eat three or 400 grams of carbs a day, then you start thinking, because you will be replenishing that glycogen maybe with one or two meals, but then another two or three meals with carbohydrates, Will cause that overspill of glucose. That will, the glucose will bounce back from from the uh, glycogen stores and 
it, it will be driven by insulin into the fat stores. Now that's the problem. Uh, the second thing, how, did, how does insulin uh, uh, do that? Basically, insulin causes the body uh, to elevate its production of enzyme, which is called uh, 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 lipoprotein uh, 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 lipase. So lipoprotein lipase is the is the is the enzyme which stops breaking down of uh, triglycerides. So completely opposite to hormone sensitive lipase, lipoprotein lipase locks the cell and only allows glucose as, or fat, uh, fatty acids to go inside and they make actually the fat cell grow. Now when you are in that elevated, chronic elevated states of insulin, you are also very prone to the possibility, to option actually, to, uh, to uh, use all the uh, dietary fat in an instant in, and use it for feeding those fat cells because they become hungry, they become very sensitive. So you're going to lose your uh, glucose sensitivity and you are going to increase your fatty acids absorption sensitivity. So fat cells become extremely sensitive for absorption due to that ever-present enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. So you, if you continue with this, you will be growing your fat cells bigger and bigger all the time. So basically this is the mechanism, the physiological explanation of fat storage. So you have an insulin as a uh, storing uh, anabolic hormone, which does the job in reducing your blood sugar down and transporting amino acids into the muscle cells as well as glucose. Now, once your glycogen stores are full, glucose cannot get there and has to be diverted into the fat cells. By constantly feeding them with glucose and, and fatty acids, those fat cells are growing and then becoming extremely sensitive. So the whole body it turns into a fat storing mechanism rather than fat burning mechanism. And this is due to the elevated presence of insulin caused by overeating carbohydrates. Now, which type of carbohydrates? Some people say, but I only eat uh, low glycemic index carbohydrates. Yes, you eat them, but on the end of the day, either they are simple carbs or complex carbs, they have to be broken down to glucose. And glucose can only be transported via insulin. So even if you have six meals of complex carbs, which are all a low glycemic index, you will experience fat accumulation because all these carbs, either they've been simple or complex, they have to be broken down to glucose because glucose is the only type of, of sugar that the body, human body can use. So even if you eat complex carbs, you will, you, will, you will end up having a lot of glucose at the end of the day, which has to be transported with the carrier, with the hormone which is responsible for that, and that's insulin, which is at the same time uh, storage hormone, but it becomes exclusively fat storing hormone because you are forcing the whole system into high uh, uh, fat cells uh, sensitivity and uh, uh, driving all this extra glucose into, into that. Now, the, another, <clears throat> the worst scenario is to eat carbohydrates with fat because when you eat carbohydrate meal with fat, your insulin will go up, but because you're in, already in that state of storing fat, insulin high and fat caused by carbohydrates and also dietary fat which you had in the meal will be directly transported to fat cells. So the worst combination, the combo that you can have in your, in your diet is to have carbs and fat in the same meal. So you should try to avoid that by all means. My, only, my advice is to lower the carbohydrates to the necessary minimum and you will find that you have to experiment because you're all different. Some people are doing well with three, 400 grams of carbohydrates, they are, they are minority, but for the majority of people, 100, 150, if I say 200, I'm very optimistic and you can carry on if you're training almost every day with high intensity, maybe doing some high intensity cardio as well 
you may get get away with those 200 grams of carbs. But this is this is like uh, uh, four meals with 50 grams of carbs only. Uh, I personally don't have more than than two carb meals a day when I eat carbs because this is for me more than enough. But we are all different. So you have to experiment. So I hope you understand the, the mechanics <clears throat> behind fat storage and the physiology of fat storage and the hormone responsible and how to control that insulin level. So in order to be insulin sensitive, meaning that the body just need enough insulin or, or a minimum necessary amount, you should be controlling your carbohydrates. You should eat rather low uh, amount of carbohydrates than high. So guys, uh, hope you learned something today. And uh, if you did, if you liked the video, please subscribe. Uh, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.